Wrong game. Hi, I'm Andy. Welcome back to Screenfire. It took us a while to rebuild everything, but finally, finally, we are able to shoot videos again. I apologize that you had to wait that long, but we're not only back, we're back also with a new video series. Some of you who know me from the German Games channel back then surely remember the retro game series Andy's Abgefahrene Anekdoten, or in English, Andy's Awesome Anecdotes. Well, it's back, but even better. We talk about old video games, what's the story about, how is the gameplay, and is it worth another try in 2022, or should it rather rest in our memory? We also talk briefly about the circumstances the game was developed and finally my personal experience with the game back then when it was released. Let's get started. Th this town, there's something wrong with it. The first Silent Hill had a pretty confusing but most of the time straightforward story. A story with multiple endings but there really wasn't much more to explore. That's the reason Konami decided to tell a new, a fresh story that wasn't connected to the first game at all. Also, forget about the straightforward part. On a superficial level, it's about the main character, James Sunderland. He receives a letter from his wife, Maria, who suggests to meet at their special place in Silent Hill. Heartwarming, isn't it? Well, at this point, Maria is dead for three years. As mentioned, this is only superficial. Silent Hill 2 isn't really about James' journey through Silent Hill, but his journey through his own past, trying to receive redemption. You also can say that about every other character you encounter in the game. Without spoiling too much, Angela's character, for example, has a very traumatic past because she was raped. The enemies in the game all represent the personal traumas and inner conflicts of the characters. Silent Hill 2 story is like the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. If you look at it, it's about the connection between man and God. Man is created in God's image, but that isn't really the case though. If you look closely, it's not a mystical old man with beard surrounded by angels, it's the human brain. If you play Silent Hill 2 and take the story word by word, you will miss out on so much. The game has so many layers and if you try to ignore them, you're probably not as much impressed with the story, but rather confused. I don't think any big studio would dare to even try and create something as complex as Silent Hill 2's story in fear of their sales numbers. That's the reason why I think it's unlikely we get such a complex and rich story in a AAA game ever again. And even if a studio would try, it's really hard to hit the nail and don't come off as artsy and pretentious. Even in 2022, Silent Hill 2's story is deep, even philosophical and captivating. It's timeless in a true video game classic. Don't make excuses, James. <laughs> I know I was a burden on you. Let's talk about the gameplay, the graphics and the soundtrack. The first Silent Hill wasn't only scary because of the world and its monsters, no, it had the most annoying and frustrating controls you could ever imagine. It's slightly better in Silent Hill 2, but it still feels really clunky and outright weird. I guess this has mostly to do with the camera, the limited ability to move it and the kind of delayed input response I had. I mean, it wasn't really delayed, but it felt like it. 
You move around and need to solve strange puzzles and defeat even stranger enemies. All that with limited resources, but compared to Silent Hill 1, the resources aren't that limited. If you play on normal, you have always plenty of ammo and health items. That makes Silent Hill 2 less of a challenge for survival horror fans. Graphics are still great and I would even say time did the game a favor because it has this really dirty feel to it. You have grain all over the screen and it feels as if you would play an old VHS tape. When it comes to the voice acting, however, I'm split. It feels off most of the time and it doesn't feel like the characters are really talking with each other. Didn't you want to see me? Yes, I wanted to see you. Even an illusion of you. That's why I came here. I read that this was due to technical issues during the production and language barriers between the voice actors and the dev team. But it really doesn't bother me that much. Even the opposite. It's fitting for Silent Hill 2 because the whole game feels like a fever dream nightmare. It feels surreal and that's a good thing, even if it wasn't intentional. The soundtrack was again composed by Akira Yamaoka and it's fantastic. Not only the catchy main theme that everyone knows, the music is always depressing, mysterious or threatening. The soundtrack is also available on vinyl and I would love to buy it one day, but unfortunately it's very expensive. I understand now. It's time to end this nightmare. There are many games where you can barely find any background information or even the making of. In my experience, especially Japanese companies tend to not share as much information as fans would like to hear. Lucky for us, there's a 32 minute long documentary on the European two disc special edition of the game. You can find it on YouTube if you don't own this version of the game and you can find the link in the description if you want to check it out. I don't want to repeat what they show you in the making of, but here are some different facts you may find interesting. Most of the original team that made Silent Hill 1 was also part of the dev team that was responsible for the sequel. To get a better understanding about American culture, they went to the US to photograph buildings and even places from random people. Personally, I've never been to Japan, but I know people who live there and from what they told me, it's very clean. So it must have been hard to find a dirty restroom in Japan to have a reference for the game that fits their vision. Even though they used motion capture for Silent Hill 2, they didn't use it for their facial expression because at the time the technology could only tell the position of the skin but not the muscles. So the voice actors had to record and lip sync their dialogue after the motion capturing was already finished. If you look at motion capturing today, the actors really play their part and their voice is recorded. And one last fact that I find funny and irritating at the same time. Did you know that Pyramid Head's inspiration was a German tank from World War II? Let that sink in, it makes it even more terrifying. Let's talk about the replayability. Should you play Silent Hill 2 in 2022 or is it better to have it in good memory and leave it alone? If you ask me, it's a timeless masterpiece and if you haven't played it yet, please do yourself a favor and just do it. Yeah, the controls are clunky and the voice acting is kind of strange, but everything else still works as good as 20 years ago. But be careful. There are a lot of inferior versions compared to the PS2 original. The Xbox version has less fog but runs with lower frame rate. Funny enough, same goes for the PC version of the game. The resolution is better but that's not a good thing. It also has less grain and it has this sterile look to it that doesn't fit with the original atmosphere. But the worst version is definitely the HD remaster collection 
that comes with Silent Hill 3 and was released on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. It also has frame rate problems and sometimes even broken graphics. I still prefer the PlayStation 2 version. Only problem is, it looks way too dark on modern televisions and if you have an old CRT screen, that's the best way to experience it. Also, there is a platinum version of the game that comes with the director's cut and has a new chapter where you can play as Maria. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. This format is called Andy's Awesome Anecdotes for a reason. Let's talk about my personal experience with the game back then. And believe me, it's something I'm not proud of when it comes to Silent Hill 2. I was lucky to have a PlayStation 2 when it was released in Europe back on the 24th of November in 2000. But unfortunately, there weren't as many great video games on the market at this time. Yeah, there was Time Splitters and Tekken Tech, Tech Tournament, but the rest of the games really didn't interest me that much. So after a while, I got bored with the PS2 and I sold it to buy other games for PC and Dreamcast. Big mistake. Shortly after I sold it, the fantastic Zone of the Enders was released with the incredible demo for Metal Gear Solid 2 that had more blood in it. I'm not even sure if I sold it before that. I guess it was shortly after, but doesn't matter. Anyway, after Zone of the Enders, it was eight months of nothing for the PS2. I knew that Silent Hill 2 was in development, but I didn't think as far that if I wouldn't sell my PS2, I wouldn't be able to play it when it was released. Well, when it was released in November 2001, I didn't have a console to play it on and it would take me another year to convince my father to buy me another PS2. As mentioned before, Silent Hill 2 was released in a two-disc special edition digipack here in Europe and I wasn't sure how limited it was. So I bought it anyway, even though I didn't have a PS2. So I had this masterpiece right in front of me and I couldn't do nothing with it. I guess it taught me to be patient that I should never sell my old games or consoles because even if they are outdated, there will be a time when you may want to return and play your favorite game. Rating an old video game can be hard, but not with Silent Hill 2. I bet you're already tired hearing me praising the game as a masterpiece, but it is. Because of the clunky controls and some other minor problems, I can't give it a 10 out of 10 rating, but it's close. I give Silent Hill 2 a 9.5 out of 10 possible points. And even if other versions than the PS2 original are inferior, if you haven't played it yet, grab the version that is available to you and play it. But be aware of what you play. Think about the story, think about the dialogue, think about the hidden meaning and the different layers. And look out for the white minivan. Yeah, I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Um, yeah. It's hard to see with this fog, but there's only the one road. You can't miss it. I hope you enjoyed our little nostalgia trip into Silent Hill. And if you do, tell us in the comments what's your favorite Silent Hill. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to pet the nurse. She deserves it. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.